بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهدى أما بعد Tonight we continue with the explanation of Kitab al-Tawheed from Sahih al-Bukhari for the great Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari rahimahullah and last week we took the hadith of hellfire and how it makes an oath by the Izza of Allah Azza wa Jal after Allah Azza wa Jal asks the fire of hell if it is full and he asks is there any more to take until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places his foot over it and then it says enough enough the hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that when Allah Azza wa Jal places his foot over hellfire, its different sides will come close to each other. Its different sides will come close to each other. And that means that its, its sides will fold into each other. Its sides will fold into each other. And it will become very tight on those who are in it. And that's how hellfire becomes full. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places his foot over it. Then hellfire, as the hadith mentions, it says, Qat, qat, enough, enough, by your izza and your karam. It makes an oath by the Izza of Allah and his karam, so his might and his generosity. And this is the proof for this chapter. Since hellfire makes an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's might and his karam, that it has become full. And the Muslims have agreed that making oaths by other than Allah is forbidden. So this hadith shows that it's permissible to make oaths by Allah's attributes. And his attributes are from him and they are not created. Otherwise the hellfire would not make an oath by Allah's attributes. Hellfire saying enough, enough by your izzah and your karam. This is literal, my brothers and sisters, and it is to be taken literally. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows the hellfire to speak with words that are heard. Just as Allah azza wa jal allows the limbs of humans to speak in the akhirah. Nothing is difficult for Allah. Just like the limbs of the people will speak in the next life and Allah makes them speak, Allah is capable of making the hellfire speak also and it does. And the purpose of this hadith, the reason why Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah put this hadith in his book is to show that Allah Azza wa Jal is attributed with the best of attributes. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Paradise will remain spacious enough to accommodate more people. Jannah will remain spacious enough to take much more people that are already in it. He said, until Allah Azza wa Jal will create a creation and let them enter Jannah. So paradise, just like hellfire, 
is a large creation. And paradise, the Prophet ﷺ said, remains vast. And it remains empty even after the people are put into it. There's still a lot of room. The Prophet ﷺ said, until Allah creates right there and then a new creation and allows them to enter paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal says, And raise to the forgiveness of your Lord and a paradise as wide as the heavens and the earth. So Jannah is very vast and it is very wide. And Allah Azza wa Jal has promised that He will fill both Paradise and hellfire. Allah made that promise. But look at the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the mercy of your Lord. Hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish in hellfire except those who deserve it. The only ones who enter hellfire are the ones who deserve it. And once everyone who deserves hellfire enters hellfire, Allah asks, are you full? It says, is there more to take? What does Allah do as the hadith mentioned? He places his foot over it. And that's when it becomes full and it says enough, enough. But as for Jannah, paradise, after everyone enters Jannah, it's still empty. And Allah promised that He's going to fill both paradise and hellfire. How does Allah fill Jannah? He creates a creation right there. What type of creation? Allahu A'lam. He creates a khalq and He lets them enter paradise. And that shows Allah's mercy. Hellfire, He will not put in it anyone except those who deserve it. As for paradise, he will create a new creation and he will let them enter Jannah. And that shows Allah's justice and his mercy. He will never punish anyone except out of justice. Allah does not create a new creation and throw them into hellfire just like he creates a creation to put in paradise. No, because that will be oppression. Why would they get punished? For no reason. But Allah does not do that. For hellfire, He places His foot over it. For Jannah, He creates a creation and He lets them enter Jannah. That shows you the mercy of your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next chapter is the chapter where Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah says, Babu qawli Allahi ta'ala, wa huwa alladhi khalaqa al-samawati wal-arda bil-haq. He says chapter, and then he mentions the verse, and it is he who has created the heavens and the earth in truth. Allah, he is the one who created the heavens and the earth in haq, meaning in truth. Imam al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, the great Mufassir, he said, the meaning of in truth here means by the word of truth and that is kun. The meaning of in truth in this verse, Allah created the heavens and the earth in truth. He said this means by the word of haq and the word of haq is kun. Be and it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ وَيَوْمَ يَقُولُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ That's how we know the understanding of this, of what haq means. Allah says, and it is He who created the heavens and the earth in truth, he says, and the day he will say be, 
and it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says to something be, it is, and that's his word of haqq. Kun fayakun. Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he intended to show that Allah azza wa jal's words are truth. His word is truth. And it is his attribute which is not created. And we repeat this often. Allah's words, his kalam, are truth and they are his attributes. And they are not created. And the things which occur from his word are created by his command. So his word is not created. But the outcome of his words, the things that happen, they are created by his command. Then Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah mentions the hadith under this chapter, the hadith of Ibn Abbas. He says, An Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma qal, kana al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yad'u min al-layl اللهم لك الحمد أنت رب السماوات والأرض لك الحمد أنت قيم السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن لك الحمد أنت نور السماوات والأرض قولك الحق ووعدك الحق ولقاؤك حق والجنة حق والنار حق والساعة حق اللهم لك أسلمت وبك آمنت وعليك توكلت وإليك أنبت وبك خاصمت وإليك حاكمت فاغفر لي ما قدمت وما أخرت وأسررت وأعلنت أنت إله لا إله إلي غيرك Then he said حدثنا ثابت ابن محمد حدثنا صفيان بهذا وقال أنت الحق وقولك الحق Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make this dua at night. He used to make this dua at night and he would say, Oh Allah, all the praise is for you. You are the Lord of the heavens and the earth. All the praise is for you. You are the maintainer of the heaven and the earth, and whatever is between them. All the praise is for you. You are the light of the heavens and the earth. Your word is the truth, and your promise is the truth, and the meeting with you is the truth, and paradise is the truth, and hellfire is the truth, and the hour is the truth. O oh Allah, I surrender myself to you, and I believe in you, and I depend upon you, and I repent to you, and with you I stand against my opponents, and to you I leave the judgment for those who refuse my message. O oh Allah, forgive me my sins that I did in the past or will do in the future, and also the sins I did in secret, or I committed in public. You are my only Lord whom I worship, and there is no Lord for me except you. What a beautiful dua. The Prophet wasallam would make this dua at night, as Ibn Abbas said. And what this means is that he would make this dua after the opening takbir in his tahajjud salah. When he would pray the tahajjud and say Allahu Akbar, he would make this opening dua in his night prayers. And this is proven by Ibn Khuzayma, rahimahullah, where he said in his book chapter, the proof that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would praise Allah with this praise after he would make takbir. Then he mentioned the hadith of Ibn Abbas 
where he said, Allahumma lak alhamd. So this dua, my brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make it after the opening takbir of his night prayers. And the first thing he would say is, Allahumma lak alhamd. Oh Allah, all the praises are for you. Alhamd is athana. The meaning of alhamd is athana. With statements for the one who is praised for his attributes. Alhamd is the praise to Allah Azza wa Jal for his attributes. And the Al in Alhamdulillah, the Al in Alhamdulillah indicates. That all the praise belongs to Allah alone. That's what the Al means in Alhamdulillah. So when you say Alhamdulillah, you are saying that every praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So Allah Azza wa Jal alone is praised for His names. We praise Him for His names. And we praise Him for His attributes. And we praise him for his blessings. And we praise him for his actions and his commands. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the first and the last to be praised. Always. As for shukr, you have hamd and you have shukr. And there's a difference. Shukr is strictly praising Allah for his attributes. And shukr is done by the heart and the tongue and the limbs. So the Prophet ﷺ opened this dua by saying, Allahumma lakal hamd. Then he said, you are the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Meaning you are the owner of them. The Lord of the heavens and the earth means the owner of the heavens <coughs> and the earth and everything within them. So you, O oh Allah, you do with the heavens and the earth and everything between them as you please because you are the owner of them. You are the one who brought them into existence after they were nothing. So the kingdom belongs to you alone and no one has a share in your kingdom. That's what this statement means. Look how the Prophet ﷺ in many of his ad'iyya and his statements, he teaches us full submission of Tawheed to Allah. You are the Lord of the heavens and the earth. You own them. You control them. You do with them as you please. And no one shares in your kingdom anything with you. Then he said, you are the maintainer of the heavens and the earth and whatever is is within them. The maintainer of the heavens and the earth. Meaning you are the one who brought them out of nothing. And the one who provides for them, the maintainer. Who maintains the heavens and the earth? Allah. By providing for his creation. So you, O Allah, are the creator, the provider, the owner and the controller. The one who gives life and takes it. The one who is free of need from anything and everything besides you is poor and is in need of you. And everyone's ending will be to you. And you, O Allah, are praised for this. The words of the Prophet ﷺ have deep meaning and value. They are not just words that he uttered. 
Al-Qayyum is one of Allah Azza wa Jal's names. And the meaning of Al-Qayyum, Al-Qayyum is the one who is Qa'im with the affairs of the creation, meaning in charge of them. The one who is in charge of looking after the affairs of the khalq. And that is Allah, Al-Qayyum, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, All the praise is for you. You are the light of the heavens and the earth. أنت نور السماوات والأرض ومن فيه. All the praise is for you, O oh Allah. You are the light of the heavens and the earth. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, rahimahullah, he said the meaning of Allah Azza wa Jal being the light of the heavens and the earth. He said, this means the one who lightens them. And it was said, the one who lightens the world with the sun and the moon and the stars. This is another interpretation. The light of the heavens and the earth, Allah being the light of the heavens and the earth, means the one who lightens the heavens and the earth with the sun and the moon and the stars. And another interpretation said, the one who lightens the hearts of his servants with guidance. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, means the one who lightens the heart of his servants with guidance. And these are all false interpretations. These are all false ta'wil and diverting the words against their apparent meanings. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he said regarding the people who say it is obligatory to make ta'wil of the verse of Allah azza wa jal where he says you are the nur of the heavens and the earth or this hadith. Shaykh al-Islam refuted them. And he said, we do not accept that we must make that wheel of this. Because the people of innovation said, you cannot say Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. You have to make that wheel of it. And that's why they mentioned those interpretations. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, we do not accept this. That we have to make that wheel of these names and attributes of Allah azza wa jal. He said, rather the majority of Muslims do not make that wheel of this name of Allah azza wa jal. He said, and that is the madhab of the salaf. The madhab of the salaf is that they do not make false interpretations of the name of Allah azza wa jal and nur and his attribute of being nur samawati wal ard and then a number of points are mentioned allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book in the quran that he is the nur of the heavens and the earth and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam clarified this even more in this hadith and there are many verses and ahadith that prove that Allah Azza wa Jal is Nur, literally. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the earth on the day of resurrection will shine and lighten from his Nur. And the authentic hadiths mention that his hijab is nur. So if the earth lightens up from his nur, then Allah is nur. As the Prophet wasallam said, you are the nur of the heavens and the earth. And in the dua, the Prophet wasallam used to say, I seek refuge with the nur of your face. 
which lightens all darkness. The Prophet Sallallahu used to say, I seek refuge, O Allah, with the nur of your face, which lightens all darkness. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the great Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the great companion of the Prophet Sallallahu he said, your Lord, with him, there is no night or day. Your Lord, with him, there is no night or day. He said, the nur of his arsh, the nur of his arsh, his throne, is from the nur of his face. It's a statement of a Sahabi. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The arsh of Allah Azza wa Jal is nur and it has light. And that light is from Allah Azza wa Jal's face. And in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet was asked, Did you see Allah? He said, Nur. How can I see him? And in Tirmidhi, Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah created his creation in a darkness and then he cast upon them his nur. Allah created his creation in a darkness. Then he cast upon them his nur. So whoever receives that nur is guided. And whoever it misses is misguided. So my brothers and sisters, there is no need for the Muslim to divert and twist and change this name and attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because as you can see, there are many verses and ahadith which affirm that Allah Azza wa Jal is nur. And it is literal. And the nur or light is attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal in two ways. Either as a name of his because his name is Al Nur, Al Hadi. So the Nur is attributed to Allah either as a name, and Allah Azza wa Jal is Al Nur. And it is also ascribed to him his Nur. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, Wa ashraqatil ardu bi nuri rabbiha. And the earth is lightened by the light of its Lord. So it's either a name for Allah and it's also attributed to him and ascribed to him. The Prophet ﷺ then said, And your word is the truth. Your word, O Allah, is the truth. Meaning, You said this, O Allah, with truth. So it is your attribute, O Allah. And whatever Allah says or speaks is truth. And there is no falsehood that can reach it. There is no falsehood in Allah's words. There is no falsehood in Allah's laws. And there is no falsehood in his commands and prohibitions. And this part of the hadith is the proof that Imam al-Bukhari intended. Your word is the truth. Where the Prophet ﷺ described his words as haq, which means it cannot be created, as claimed by the Mu'tazila and others. And that's why there is a battle between Ahl Sunnah and the people of innovation regarding Allah's words. 
Ahl sunnah say Allah's words are not created because they are his attribute. The Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila and those who follow their path said no, Allah's words are created. And this is the path of misguidance. The Jahmis and the Mu'tazilis, they denied that Allah Azza wa Jal has words which he speaks. They denied that Allah has words which he speaks. And they denied that his words are from his attributes. They said Allah speaks, but what that means is that he creates speech. They said Allah speaks, but the meaning of his speech is that he creates the speech. So according to them, Allah does not speak literally. After the Jahmis and the Mu'tazilis, the Ashairah came, which is another sect. And they said Allah's words are the meaning which are within himself. The Ashaira, pay attention. They said Allah's words are the meaning which are within Himself, but Allah does not have kalam, speech which He actually speaks and is heard. So they agreed with the Mu'tazila by denying the reality of the attribute from Allah. Just as they also agreed with them that it is created. And Imam al-Bukhari refuted them all with this chapter. So according to the innovators, my brothers and sisters, to make it more clear to you the difference between Ahlul Sunnah, the truth and falsehood. Ahlul Sunnah believe that Allah speaks literally with words that are heard. And the proof for this is many. Jibreel alayhi salam heard the Quran and the Tawrat and whatever else directly from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he brought it down and he spoke it directly to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to Musa alayhi salam numerous times. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا And Allah spoke to Musa with speech. And Musa heard Allah's words and they had conversations. That's dalil that Allah speaks literally. According to the deviants, According to the other sects, and they vary, some are worse than others. Some denied the attribute completely and they said Allah does not speak. Some said Allah speaks, but what it actually means is that he creates the speech. And the actual meaning of his speech is the meaning that is within him. Then he creates it. And that's the opinion of the Ashairah. So what they actually believe is that Allah Azza wa Jal does not literally speak. And they believe that the Quran is not a word which Allah uttered and spoke. They don't believe that. They believe that the Quran is a meaning which is within Allah, within himself. But then he created the words within Jibreel alayhi salam. And then Jibreel took that meaning which was within Allah that Allah created within him and then he gave it to the Prophet ﷺ, and then it was worded either by Jibreel or by the Prophet ﷺ. This is what they believe. All of that to deny that Allah speaks. So to them... The speech of Allah is the meaning within him. But then he created its speech within the creation. Within Jibreel alayhi salam. And this is falsehood. Because there is many proofs that Allah spoke literally. How did Musa alayhi salam hear Allah? 
And how did the Prophet ﷺ speak to Allah in the Isra and the Mi'raj and the many other proofs? Allah says, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Allah spoke directly to Musa. But they opposed the verses and the ahadith. And that is why Imam al-Bukhari, when he put this hadith, stating that Allah, your word is the haqq, meaning it is truth and it is spoken by you. And this is a refutation against everyone who denies the reality of this attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks. Insha'Allah, next week we will continue with the explanation of this hadith and what the Prophet ﷺ meant by the statements in it. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Al Bayan Radio, the voice of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah.